in the last session so we have uh, discussing on the a simple mvc application so without annotations right so that is what so we started and looking at so then from there so we developed a small mvc application then we discussed about what is the importance of this dispatcher solid configuration and how do we write the controllers right what what is the usage of the controllers then so we discussed about the how we can configure how we can configure a controller with associated handler mapping uh, um, so in the spring configuration file right and then so we discussed about the how the jsp is going to be rendering back to the uh, uh, with response back to the jsp right so i think so that is the what the steps so that we have discussed and let us discuss now in the session discuss about the concept of the view resolvers so the importance of the view resolvers so in spring framework so they have introduced a very important and useful concept for us to make our application is more dynamic so the concept of view resolvers has been introduced so the view resolvers means so right now what we are doing is the view name which we are directly hard coding in our controller classes like if you look at here i'm directly hard coding the complete path of slash web enough slash jsp slash welcome dot jsp as i said so if if we are working on mvc application in the future if i change my view i should not disturb controller right the only view has to change so without any disturbance of your uh, the controller layer or service layer or da layer but when it comes to here in the future if i change it from welcome uh, welcome dot jsp to welcome dot html have to completely okay change in whichever the places in application this dot jsp is there i have to replace okay and the second thing is so during this refactoring so there might be a chance i may might be moved from web of jsp folder to some other folder again you have to change the path also you have to change your web of location and we need to change the jsp path maybe instead of jsp i might be using so dot html or maybe if i'm so i might be using in a folder called maybe js so some different folder if you are creating so wherever this path is hard coded you have to go ahead back and then change the the complete path of your application right so the complete path of the your page wherever you have written so you need to change which means that so still this controller is depending on the view so how do we make so this controller is very generalized view so the controller should be able to return only the logical name of the JSP, but not a path even extension also. Okay. For to address this, so the concept of view resolvers has been introduced in Spring Framework. So the main purpose of the view resolver is to don't want to hard code the view name inside of the controller. Okay. That's the point number one. And the second point is so we want to give a logical name based on the logical name so the view resolver should be able to figure out the fully qualified path of the views should be decided by your view resolvers so whenever the controller is going to be returning back to the jsps so the controller must should redirect it to controller must should redirect it to your the view resolver view resolver so will get the fully qualified path and then it will return back to the jsp okay so here if you see the so for to solution for to address this so here is the configuration of the view resolver because it's a built-in class you don't need to do anything else just we need to configure in spring configuration file so by mentioning the view is so warg dot spring framework dot web dot servlet dot view dot internal resource view resolver is the name of the class so which we have to use for to configure what is the prefix and what is the suffix
prefix is nothing but so complete path of your page and suffix is nothing but the uh, the extension of your pages and uh, finally what what will be a left so here welcome not jsp only welcome is left that welcome we are calling as a logical name from this jsp okay that is how you have to implement the concept of view resolvers let us go back to our application and let's implement how we can configure this view resolver okay how we can make it work this so and before we develop this any questions on regards to view resolvers actually yes so if we use view resolver uh, that i mean earlier we are giving the fully uh, qualified class name with the extension like webinf.jsp so that we don't have to do on all, all we have to do is just uh, uh, i mean initialize this bean with the property in uh, configuration file right exactly okay so in the controller so what we have to do is in the controller just you need to return in the model and view we have given a fully qualified file name and this completely should be removed the only the logical file name so you have to return as just welcome so that welcome represents the slash webinf slash jsp slash welcome dot jsp will be given by view resolver that will be the responsible of view resolvers in every controller class from now onward so we will only return the logical name but we will never write the fully qualified path make sense amit yeah sir All right, so let me launch the STS. Looks like it is launching. So once the STS is launched, then so I'll try to show you how we can apply this. Okay, so with this, so your controllers is becoming independent. And so in the future, if you change, in the future, if you change, suppose maybe you are using same JSPs, but you might be refactored so instead of dot jsp2 you have given some other folder name you don't need to really worry about it the thing of every controller class so in center of points if you change in one place it will automatically locate in every other places okay it will automatically locate in every other places so you don't need to make a changes in each and every class okay the same the case with the uh, extension also dot jsp also if you make a changes in here and you don't need to change in every way anywhere in the controller because you have not hard coded so it will automatically reflect it so the one change see, is become uh, easy to condition. make your code yes here in the property tag we are giving prefix and suffix right yes but in in prefix we already mentioned jsp where we have mentioned jsp uh, in the prefix i mean the prefix value equals to web inf slash jsp right okay and same we are doing in suffix also okay understand here under web inf i added a folder called jsp to place all my jsp files in a folder called jsp okay maybe assume that so maybe that is a your folder where you are storing all your jsp files I want to store all my files in a folder called JSP folder. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the extension is different and your extension is different and your folder is different. Uh, Srini, I have a question. Uh, can we have you know multiple properties for suffix? And in case of you know multiple JSP files, is uh, is that possible? I mean uh, what is that? Multiple? Multiple uh, property suffix. Let's say we have you know one JSP over here, and if you wanted you know multiple JSP, so in that case you know should, uh, can we have multiple properties? So that's what I said. So okay, this will supports for every JSP. Okay, I'm not speaking about only one JSP. Okay, across the application, if you are writing 
thousands of JSPs. Every thousands of JSP look at this path and it, it uses the same extension. And okay. is it possible, Suni, right? Suppose we have, uh, uh, I mean, different extensions. Suppose uh, one is dot JSP, another one is dot JS, another one is dot HTML. So, what is I that? mean, dot JS? are you talking about? Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, different uh, extensions. Is okay. it allowed? Eh? I mean, uh, I just, I'm just thinking about uh, when you required uh, different extensions. Your view no, should sorry. be either HTML or your view should be JSP or your view should be, okay, uh, maybe uh, JS files, right? Yeah. Uh, not like combination of everything, right? Yeah, correct. But but like, right. I'm just asking, like, whether is it possible not combination? I mean, uh, basically they have they have think think in, in that aspect. Basically, that will be not allowed in the application. So that's what so they have given an option to choose an only one suffix. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because if your application is designed in JSP, complete JSP. Under that JSP, you can load as many JS files so that you want. Right? So you know how to include the JS files. So that will be automatically handled. The same the case, suppose if you are returning, if you are not using JSP, if you are using so dot HTML, and you can. Suppose if you are not using dot HTML, suppose if you are using dot JSF, still you can make your changes to dot JSF. Okay? And in that aspect, so they are returning a generalized view. In that generalized view, and your other uh, components of your view can be integrated in that page, in that file, can be integrated or included in that particular file. Suppose, example, in the HTML, I want to include all the JSS files, so CSS files, everything, which you can still include in your uh, JSP page. Okay, that we are not hard coding inside of controller. So that we are not hard coding any of the server side mechanism. So which is directly rendering in the front end UI itself. Okay, all right. So any other questions? And please, all good questions. Nice to discuss. So if you have anything, so ask. So uh, what I'll do is I don't want to okay make a changes in this application. So let us keep you for reference and I'll try to create a new application. So with the same details. Oh, so we have a good option, right? So let me refactor. So right click. So I'll try to create a new project and we'll configure here and we'll make some changes in this application. Let us see. So whether it is able to accept the view resolvers or not. So I'll try to go to refactor and rename Maven artifacts. Okay, let us change the name of the application. So this is our 24 project. Spring MVC, okay. So view resolver project, right? So view resolver. Okay. Spring MVC view resolvers project. I would like to rename complete uh, project to na Eclipse. I think it won't uh, refactor here, right? Does it going to be? I, I don't think so. It's just renaming it. Oh, very good. Good catch. Thank you for I'm just renaming blindly. That is my mistake. So let me copy this project. So first of all, let me make a copy and paste this thing. Okay. I think I'll paste it. Okay. And then so we will uh, refactor it. Okay. I think that is what, what we did in the last time. That was the first time I was using that option. Let us see. Now I'll go to refactor. Let us refactor entire Maven artifact. I'll copy and then paste this project. So rename this project in a class application.
okay All right, so project is ready. So with the complete refactoration. So now what I'll do, okay, we know that. So we have hard coded in the controller. Okay. So let me open the controller. And same thing, so let me also open spring configuration file. So here is spring configuration file. Okay, so under okay JSP folder, if you remembered, okay, one of you asked a question. So why a multiple JSP here? We have already using so this JSP and this JSP are different. Under JSP, I have a folder file called welcome.jsp. This is extension is different. Your folder is different for your reference. Okay, so now going back here, so I would like to configure so view resolver here. So how we can configure view resolver so similar to however we configure other bins any built-in bin can be configured so in spring configuration file and this bin we are not really invoking anywhere it will be automatically called by spring dispatch survey so you don't need to declare any ID you don't need to declare any name so that's completely optional until unless if you are explicitly looking up then only you need to mention a ID and name otherwise just directly mention your name of the class okay name of the class and then so I'm writing so class name is internal view resource view resolver internal resource view resolver So this okay for this class you need to perform a dependency injection so that's called setter injection so and it has two properties the first property is named as a prefix okay and uh, so the value of the property so which we need to inject we will inject and then so we have second property okay so the another important property which we need to inject is suffix okay so now your prefixes should be whatever you have hard coded in the controller this should be pulled out of this controller so what i will do i will pull this out of this controller slash webinf slash jsp slash is my uh, prefix Okay, and in the controller, so dot JSP is also removed, and this should be my suffix. Finally, what is left in the view is just the logical name. So with that, you cannot decide okay which is belongs to which. So that should be decided by your view resolver class. Okay. So for your reference, let me also make a changes in welcome dot JSP. Make sure that so this class is only calling. Okay, I will simply okay change a message welcome to spring framework so using okay so view results okay for just a, I'll, I'll try to make a change in the message let me try to display message is also in center tag okay i want to display all these messages in center i will apply center tag for this So if you want you can also apply some body color different colors you can still apply your HTMLs so busy color uh, you can apply any color um, okay. light light yellow let's see what what can come I'm just writing a light yellow let us see what color can represents 
that's it so your spring configuration file is configured right your spring configuration file is configured and your welcome.jsp is also there and so and uh, now the view is returning a just a logical page and no, now let us deploy and then try whether this is accessible or not. Sweeney, I have just, you know, I think I have disconnected from you. Uh, uh, this welcome is there, right? In the set view name. Uh, can you please go to controller? I just wanted to understand, you know, the mapping between the logical name and the physical name, where it is happening. I just wanted to uh, get it. Okay. So what Sorry. will happen is this model and view the object will be hand over to the dispatcher solid. Dispatcher solid will read the data from this model and view. It will check what is the view name is set by controller and what is the model object is set by the controller. So it will not do anything for, for model objects, but it will do for something for view name. So whenever there is a logical view name is returned, spring framework that is means the dispatchers or later will contact the view resolvers does any view resolver is configured for this application if any view resolver is configured for this application it will pass the logical name to view resolver so boss i have only logical name can you share a fully qualified a fully qualified file name back to me before i render to jsp and then simply so it will uh, it will contact us to the view resolver. So view resolver will generate a fully qualified file name using of this logical name, and that will hand over to dispatcher solid. And this uh, so dispatcher solid so will pick up that JSP, then it will render the information to the browser. Take it sense. so. That Yes, that means you know there is no uh, logical connection that developer can see. That is, you know, the framework is you know, taking care of the mapping of mapping between the logical and the physical uh, name, right? Yes, that's correct. So you cannot uh, visually or physically you can observe, but you have to logically think about it. So this is what really happening uh, between these two. Uh, can we see while executing this? Uh, application that you know uh, the uh, what we are you know uh, getting back to the set yes. view name yes yes that you can oh. do. you can see um, oh. so oh. in the console you can observe okay. that the view resolver configuration so view resolver activities okay uh, okay thank you yeah. okay so now let us deploy the application and then so watch it so we are correct or not huh. i'll remove all other project i will only deploy the view resolver project so click on finish it are you sure you want to remove from the resource why not yes Okay, project is being started deploying. Let me show you. If there is any view resolver is being actively monitoring. See here, a internal view resolver is actively uh, monitored, and your file name is okay detected for this slash welcome.hbm. So it is going to be providing a fully qualified name. So the internal view resolver being is actively monitoring. Okay. So now let us start submitting the request. So what is the request name? Slash welcome dot HTML is our request name. Copy this request name. Then let us try to access it. Okay. Now if I'm accessing this, so it should be able to contact your controller. Then it should prepare a fully 
qualified JSP is here. So it is contacted. So your JSP then okay, it is given a fully qualified JSP. So you might get a question or you might doubt it. Is it really looking whatever you have configured the view resolver? Okay, I'm doubted. Is it really adding a web INF path under JSP? So if you really want to do that check kind of a debugging things, change your file name to welcome one dot JSP. Then look at so what it is really adding prefix and suffix you will come to know for your debugging stance point of if you, if you, if you really want to check. Now if I'm trying to refresh you see here what it is doing by default it is trying to adding slash web INF slash JSP and slash welcome one dot JSP is adding. So whatever you have configured in the internal view resolver it is trying to apply applying everything. Still you have some question still you go back and make a change. Suppose I don't want to this to be an okay. Uh, JSP I want to make so this is an HTML again. This is a from uh, debugger uh, Aspects so if you make a changes is it really going to be applied this dot HTML file will look up or dot JSP will look up Okay, and you can still go back and then so now submit a request Now I'll submit a request again So because we have changed in a spring configuration file I don't think so your project is still refer reload it but now let us try I'll close this browser we'll try to. because it says spring configuration file right so we have to make it change otherwise let me stop the server and restart it okay I'll restart it Okay, I will go back again. So redeploy the application, rerun the application. Okay, run it, finish it. Okay. So now what I'll do here, I'll try to access with our URL. So dot htm is our URL. So now if you see what it is really attempting, is it really contacting your view resolver? Then whatever you have written that extension is adding automatically, right? So whatever, okay, the changes you are making a logical aim. So with that it is dynamically preparing and forming Okay, this is for debugging aspects So how that is really contacting then getting information if you have such questions Okay, still you can always do this debug and then you will come to know that it is really happening or not Okay, so that's it. So any questions from here on view resolvers sometimes it will automatically re re replies here it is automatically redeployed so let me try to and this application it's perfectly accurate. Okay. Uh, Sini, uh, just just a quick question that uh, the JSP the logical name it should be the uh, the file name the um, the file name that you have mentioned in the folder that should be the logical name right always. Yes. Okay. Not always. Not always. Okay. Remember. Remember that. Suppose under this JSP I have okay different modules like a login module, admin module, okay some X module, some Y module. Suppose. I want to move this file to under login model. You can still apply here slash admin slash welcome. You can keep it. Slash admin slash welcome. You can keep it. You don't need to give each and every path in the view resolver. Are you getting what I'm? Okay. Okay. Suppose. Okay. Uh, this view. If you have moved to a new folder, this 
would be mute so there is some account. Hmm. Okay. So here I would like to add a new package. Hello. Ajit, so yeah, I'll be joining in five minutes. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. So okay, uh, you want to add a new folder. Uh, that's not a package which you are trying to add. Okay, that's okay. Let me try to add a new manually. Let me go to file new folder. Okay. I'd like to add some okay login related modules. All I want to place under this folder. Okay, under this, I want to move this page also. Okay, and uh, for suppose in the future you have one more module called admin. So like this, every module so you cannot mention here, right? In the view resolver class. But so what you can do, and that your modules which will be a constant, so you can place under this folder slash login slash welcome, and uh, so the slash login is represents your location of the folder, so where it is. And the last is the the logical name of your file. Okay, got got it. Okay, uh, it just view resolver no can just no pass the information till the uh, the JSP folder. Yes, the physical part. Okay. Yes. Okay, so now if I am still going to access, you see here, it is still accessing. Still it is accessing, even though my file is mute. Okay, into the next level, I have changed in my controller, but still I am able to access the application. How? Because so I have moved to login dot so this and the same thing was updated. But this time, if you try to access with only welcome dot JSP, and if you see your application is going to be redeploy, but if you have not mention your login folder, what will happen? So and you have not mentioned that in the Spring configuration file at the same time you have also not mentioned here so what will happen so simply it will give you a fair error saying that welcome.jsp is not found so HTTP status 404 because it is only searching under JSP folder but under JSP folder there is no welcome.jsp it is simply failing to access that okay under subroot folders can be configured in the view itself So hope everybody understands. So all right. So sounds good then. So that's all I have. So if someone uh, login slash login also in Spring configuration file file as well, right? Mm -hmm. You can slash login. slash login into that Spring config file also, right? You can mention, but suppose in the future if I've added something called admin folder. Okay, and after that, so I have added some other folder. So it is not a good to add each and every folder here. The root folder should be is enough. The root folder, anyway, subfolders you are not going to be changing, right? So that remains the same. All right, right. All right. Okay, I think with that said, that's it. I have to for now. So let us continue the rest of other MVC concepts in the next session. So until that, so have a good day to all of you and see you on the next session. And bye bye. Have a good night. Sorry. Have a good day. Bye bye.